In today's tutorial, we're going to create this particular fake music visualizer type thing in audio visualizer that shows the spectrum of audio, except we're going to fake it. We're not going to actually use real audio so that we can get this effect really fast in case you require it in some sort of animation where you don't have to bake it with the sound. So let's get right into it. After opening a new Blender scene, first thing we want to do is create this using geometry nodes. Geo nodes. So we're going to switch this to the geometry node editor. Of course, we can actually keep another one for the timeline. We will keep this as the timeline. So now in our geometry node editor with cube selected, we're going to click new. And this brings up a new geometry node setup. So let's just move this up, move this up as well. So now we have to mess around with this to get the different lines of bars that's going to be going up and down. So let's remove the group input because we don't need that. What we first need is a line. So we can actually do that just by adding in a mesh line. Or we can actually add in a grid in case we want more control, which we'll show in a future video, in fact. Now we want to connect the grid to the geometry so that we get the grid. So we need to know how many points there are. And this is it. Since we need only one single line, Let's say that we want the points to all be on the y-axis. We'll just change the x-axis values to 1. And we're going to have the y-axis as many as we require. So let's just keep it as 15 for now. Okay. Now, if we want to increase the size on the y-axis, again, just scale up the y. The x doesn't matter at all. Now, we need points to come out from this. So we're going to have to add in a curve line to each of the vertices over here. So to, in order to do that, we're going to have to instance, put an instance onto each point. So we're going to search for instance on points. And we're going to place that in here. And for the instance, we're going to use a curve line and not a mesh line because we also want a profile curve to be added there. So we're going to add in a curve line. And we're going to switch that into the instance. So now you have each of the lines coming in. But right now, the, it's just a curve. We need this particular curve to actually have some thickness. So in, for that purpose, we're going to change it from a curve to a mesh. So we're going to search for curve to mesh. And then in our profile curve, we're going to put in a circle. So that also has to be a curve circle. Now we have the circles added in, but of course they are way too large. So we're just going to reduce the radius to something that makes sense. So maybe 0 .0, 0 0.02. And there we have it. Now we can change the positioning of this just by changing the Y scale and things like that. So let's just keep it maybe have um, 30 or 40 of these lines and place it like this. So now we need the heights to change for all of these. And we can do that by changing the Z value over here. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to drive the Z value using a noise texture. So we're going to have Shift A noise. We're going to add in the noise texture right here. And we're going to add in a color ramp so that we have finer control over the noise. So let's put the color into the factor. And we would directly connect the color ramp into the scale, but that would change the x, y, and z values. And we don't want that. We want only the z value to change. So in order to do that, we're going to have a combined x, y, z node. And now we're going to add in the color to just the z axis while keeping the x and y as one. And then connect the vector to the scale. And now we have control over just the z axis. We can change our noise texture to 40 right here. And then as we play around with the w, we're going to get the audio visual spectrum. Now, if you want all of these to have a little bit more variation, you can always add in a multiplication node and things like that. But in order we, in case we want it to start from a lower region, just make sure that you drag the black in. And if you want it to go even higher, drag the white in. So that's what's going to increase the contrast basically between the different points. And now we have to animate the W slider. So we can just type in hash frame, which is a driver to take the frame number, and then maybe divide that by a pretty large number. Let's go with 1,000. And OK, that's a bit too large of a number. So maybe 100. 
And there, now you have some sort of a audio visualizer already created. That's the crux of the entire animation. If you want to make something else just for the sake of creating it, let's add in a ground plane. Let's scale it up. Oops. Let's Alt G, remove its location, scale it up. Now let's look at our camera. Let's type N view camera to view and then just position the camera to some place that we like. Right about there should be fine. Or maybe zoom in a bit. Great, now let's go into our rendered view. We currently have one single light source. We can move that around to our liking. Let's say something around that looks good enough. And now we just have to mess with the material. The material is something that's also very important to deal with. We can't just change the material over here. But what we're going to have to do is it already has material assigned to it. So we have to set material over here. So we have to click on set material and place that right here and select material over here. Now we can play around with the material and it's going to change accordingly. So let's take a look at what looks good. I think the profile curves could be a little fatter. So we can just go here and increase the radius by a bit maybe. That's basically how you create one of these. If you want a little bit more control, let's change the color from this by clicking the yellow dot. We can change it to a sky texture. Then in EV, we can change it to like Pritam. And then you can actually just drag this around to get whatever color. So this is like nighttime and things like that. So just play around with this, drag it till you get something that you like. I think that looks good. Take the base, create a new material for the floor change it all the way to like maybe black and then increase the metallic value, reduce the roughness and go to your world set. I mean your render properties and switch on screen space reflections. So now you get something that looks even cooler. Maybe you could increase the roughness a little bit of this floor or reduce the metallicness. And there now we have a slight amount of reflections. Maybe zoom in just a little bit more and that's it. I'm going to change my frame rate from 24 frames per second to 30 my end length i'm going to keep that at 300 so it is 10 seconds long finally if you want this to change color there's a really nice way to do that so we're going to take a look at that as well which is go into your shader editor tap n to remove the side panel and this base color we have to drive it so we're going to drive this with a hue saturation value node shift a and search for hue saturation right there so now we have a hue saturation value node. We connect this into the base color. And now we can change this color to whatever we want. Once we've changed the color, let's switch this off so that we don't see any of the overlays. If we change the hue, we can get all of the different colors. Now, essentially, if you were just to keyframe the color values from the base color, the first thing is you can't keyframe values over here. And that becomes pretty weird because if I wanted it to change from blue and slowly go to red, what would happen is if I was just, I can only keyframe this blue and the red and the color would literally go like that and it could get desaturated and come back to red. It wouldn't go through the blue and the purple like that. So if you wanted to do that, you can add in this hue saturation value node and then keyframe this hue to start off from maybe 0.5 at frame zero hit I, just hover over the hue and hit I, go to frame 300, and then make the hue maybe one, and hit I again. So now when you actually play it, it's gonna slowly go from blue to all the other blues, the purplish hues, the pinkish hues, and then slowly change to red. If you wanted to go back to how it was, then what you could do is maybe end it at 600, simply because I don't want it to change too fast. You could of course end it at 300, but I don't want the color changes to be that fast. I want it to be more gradual. And then go to 600 and then make the hue 1.5 and it'll be back to blue and then hit just hit I. So now that you do that, it'll change its color slowly, go through the entire color wheel and come back to what it is. So that when you actually play it back, it'll sort of look like it's a perfect loop in case you required it to be a perfect loop. Although the points aren't going to match up, but you won't tell that much because the jump is going to be very little. So it's fine. That's about it. You could add in a lot of things to just make this more attractive, but this is just to keep it simple. So 
go over here, change the output to whatever directory you require, and then change the file format to FFmpeg video, switch the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4, change the output quality to perceptually lossless, and then you can go ahead and hit render. Remember, if you did want some more control, like you want this to be 3D, since we did this using ge GeoNodes, you could actually just change the grid value, have a few more vertices over here, change this value, and you can get an entire three-dimensional grid of this that changes as well. So in case you needed this, you could go ahead and do that. And we will actually be using this technique to create something else in the next tutorial. Be sure to take a, to keep a lookout for that. So now, once you render it, this is what we get. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Stay creative.